Well, hey there. So we're going to do a Mobius cowl in my rosebud stitch. And this is it right here. It's a gorgeous stitch. It's one of my really early first stitches, I think around uh, number three. And I developed it out of owl eye. And I can show you why I called it rosebud. Look at all these little things that look just like little rosebuds in here. You can really see it in the pink color here. But they're in every color. And it's really easy to do. And if you wanted to do it with the worsted weight on a big gauge like this, it still looks good and you get a stitch that looks like this. So it's very nice both ways. With a bulky, this is what I'm getting. And on the other side, the reason I want to do a Mobius is look how good the other side looks too. Just really, really gorgeous. I want both sides to show. And the edge that I developed with this, and because I've used a stitch so much over the years, I've had a lot of time to develop an edge that I think is perfect with it. And this is the edge that I developed. So as you can see, the edge looks like this, and it's got kind of a long, short, long, short, as it goes down, kind of following the stitch, but just blending in perfectly. The sides look the same. And on the back side, same thing. You've got the edge coming down. So I'll show you how to do that edge. This way, when we do the Mobius, both sides have a nice edge on them. And both sides look really nice. You can see the rosebuds on this side too. <laughs> so there it is. Now you can make it wider if you want or, or narrower. I used 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14 pegs, which for me I feel will be a nice cowl. I'm a small person. And um, you can go wider than that if you'd like, or a bit narrower, depending what you like. The other thing is, um, from what I show you, you could just continue on and make a scarf <laughs> as well. And I'll have both the cast on and the bind off I use with this on my channel. So that's the cast on. So I've got to get you caught up to me. So I'm going to show you how to cast on and the first few stitches in this row. You see how they kind of blend in, but they're a little thicker to protect the edge of the work. So you don't have this right against right against the, the edge piece. Okay, so this, oh, and I'll show you the yarn. You'll want to see the yarn. So the yarn that I'm using is a thin bulky. It's Sirdar Aura. I lost the tag, but they don't have number. They don't have a name, just a number. But here's the colors in it. It's got lots of nice colors. Yeah, it's a very thin bulky. I've had worsted as thick as this one, actually. But it is a bulky. <laughs> And it's, it's nice. It's silky. It knits up nice. And the color run is fabulous. Every color has more than one color in them, but they just go together so nicely. Okay, so the yarn that I'm going to use right here is some leftover yarn that I have to show you how to go on. This is Barcelona yarn. I have no idea what the color was. <laughs> But I'm going to use this loom, and I'm going to show you the cast on. Okay, so all I do is a slip knot. Put it on the first peg. And then that, this is important. It's on this other loom, too. You mark two pegs on each end, 
I'm not going to go this far for the demonstration, but I had this marked for something else I did and then two pegs. That's what I have on the other one. And that way you know that's your end because we're going to do that end treatment that you saw there. Of course, you're, you're welcome to do it, another end treatment if you like, but th I worked that one out. It's long enough for the stitch and it'll work great for the Mobius because it puts an edge on both sides. We just go behind the peg, the working yarn through. And I'll do that again because I was talking instead of demonstrating, but it's very easy. You've got the slip knot on. And also I have it on my channel. You put the hook in, pull a loop through. And that's all, all you do. You tighten it and you just put that loop behind the next peg. Oops, sorry. And tighten it up. Behind the next peg. And tighten it up. And that's all there is to that cast on. Um, it's basically a crochet chain cast on and it's done without the crochet hook. You can use a crochet hook if you want, but on these big looms it's really not necessary. Okay, I'm going to have to um, just adjust camera a little bit wants to go down too low. Okay. And then to finish off the cast on you just let that over and there you go. You're cast it on. And then we're going to do two rows of owl eye and if you haven't done owl eye before all we're going to do is put this over the first two pegs, knit it off and we do this nice and loose. Okay, and then whatever peg we're at is peg one. We go across peg one and two, nice and loose. See how loose I have this? Very loose. And just knit it over. And again, and if you find you're too tight, you can just pull, pull out your, and you're loose again. So you can control it like that if you get to the point where you're finding that you're making it too tight. You keep it nice and loose it'll be much easier to knit. It looks better too I think and it certainly saves you from having carpal tunnel. So now we're on the end peg we just come around and go over the two again and we just do two rows of owl eye. Gives us a, gives, blah, 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 I can't speak gives us a good base. <laughs> A little bit tongue-tied there. Okay. And that's it. Then we can go right into the stitch. Okay. So I'm going to get the other piece again and we can get started. That's all you have to do to start. Very, very easy. There's no pearls in this entire thing and neither of these stitches will curl. The beauty of Rosebud is it doesn't curl. <laughs> and it's such a pretty stitch. Okay, so I've already got started but I will show you these end pegs a couple times how they're done. So I'm just, just going to show you the stitch. So you come from behind whatever peg you're on, peg one, and you go over one and two, just like when you do owl eye. Okay, and then you go back and go over peg one and two again. Okay, now you're at peg one, you go behind and go over peg one and two. Knit them off. Go behind again and over peg one and two and knit it off. And I'm just going to adjust this camera again. Come on. Wrong way. There we go. Okay, so you're on peg one, over peg one and two. And again. So basically each 
peg is getting four stitches. Here we are on this peg. It's already had two because it was wrapped with this and now it's going to get two more. So four stitches. So this stitch goes so unbelievably fast. It really doesn't take any time at all to get any length. And I'm knitting it nice and loose so everything's easy to do. And my yarn. I need some yarn here. <laughs> there we go. Okay. So behind peg one, over one and two. And again. And that's all there is to the stitch. <laughs> it's getting all wrapped up in this cord for charging my cell phone. <laughs> now I don't know how many uh, wraps I did on this. So I'm going to undo it. Maybe I won't. It's black. Maybe I'll just look at it. And I know I need another one. Okay. There we go. I could tell by looking. And see, you get these cute little, although it's hard to see on the black, but What can I do? It turned it turned to black now. There was all these big colors on it. Now we got dark yarn. But anyway, go behind one and over two and knit it off. And it's easy to see wrapping it against the pink at least, even if it's harder to see the stitches. <laughs> Okay, now we're coming to the edge. So here's how we do that edge. Okay, so we're going to wrap these two twice. And now we've got the marked pegs. So we're going to come over and wrap this first and second peg. And then we're going to come back just like we were doing a normal wrap, but we're going to wrap over all three. Now, if you can't be loose, then you can you wrap them one at a time. Okay, but I'm going to be really loose and it's just faster to do them all at once for me. And I just knit them all off, especially this edge one. Don't let it get too tight. Okay, and I'm going to come from behind and in front of just the two. And making sure this is really loose here, I'm going to knit it off. Then I'm going to come back behind it again. And now I'm going to go over all three nice and loose. If you can't be loose, do them one at a time. And knit them off. And that's all there is to doing the corner. And if you're nice and loose, this is the edge you'll have, the edge that I showed you, where it's like this on both sides. Okay, so now we're at peg one. So we're going to wrap peg one and two. We're going this way behind, wrap peg one and two. Same stitch all the way along. Behind one, we go in front of one and two. We do it again. And I'll show you how to do the edge from the other side. It's amazing though how fast this stitch goes and how fast you get a, a piece and a project out of it. It's just amazing. But yeah, it's because you have four stitches. Now I have lots of projects in Rosebud in my Ravelry shop. I think I have three projects where it's called Rosebud hats or Rosebud cowls. And I also have Rosebud mixed with a bunch of other stitches in my Ravelry shop, as well as a cowl that has three of my stitches and Rosebud is one of them. So Rosebud's been in, in my Ravelry store for years now. 
but I will put links to the rosebud, other rosebud patterns. Okay, now here we are and we're on these edge stitches. So here's number one. We go over one, two, and three very loosely and knit them all off. When you do it loose like this, they're all you wraps. Okay, and then we're going to come back over two and I'll do it one at a time just to show you how you can do that. So you do your U wrap nice and loose. You do another U wrap. You come back around them and in front of them and you're going to do all three, but we'll do them one at a time so you can see that. U wrap, U wrap, and U wrap. And then we're at this one. We're going to go over one and two, nice and loose. Okay, and back again. Over one and two. And behind and in front. <laughs> My uh, yarn got caught there. Okay, and that is all there is to it. And you're going to want to get enough length because you're going to want to put this around you, uh, the, the length that you want your cowl. And then when we're going to Mobius it, we might lose a tiny bit of length, but not very much. It's just the way we're going to attach it. So just get the length you want for your cowl. You might want it closer to your neck or you might want it really, really drapey and you can have it as thick as you want. Or if you want, you can go ahead and just make this into a scarf. You can see how nice the end is and how good it's going to lie and it's not going to curl. And it looks really, really beautiful. If you've used a thicker yarn, it'll be it'll be even more lacy looking like this. And uh, if you used a thinner yarn, it'll look more like that. It'll still be gorgeous. Okay, so I will put you on pause, get a little bit of length till I'm ready, and then we'll do the next thing. Okay, well, I'm still going to do a few more rows to get enough length because once we Mobius it, which is turning it like this, we use, we'll, we'll lose just a tiny bit of length. Not that much really, but I want it to have a bit of a nice drape. And I also wanted you to see when I'm knitting it in a light color so you can see better what's going on with the stitches. Okay, so now I'm going to go over all three coming back and uh, and then you can see how this works and how the stitches look. So I'm going over the first two and when I do that you just get the look that owl eye has with these two little things here. When I go over it the second time So you can tell how many times you've gone over it. Then I get this pattern here. That will be the rosebud looking thing when it drops down. So then we go over the next two. And again. And we get to the, this again. So. You can see it better when we're using the light colored yarn. You can knit it a bit tighter than I'm knitting it. I'm knitting it really, really loose because I want it to have this um, how do I explain it? Um, a little bit more curly look. Because see how pretty that is? But uh, even tighter, it'll still look really, really nice. I've done it 
done uh, rosebud stitches all kinds of different ways. I did them it quite tightly when I did a hat because I wanted the weave to be a bit tighter. It looks good every way and on both sides. So it's very nicely reversible in a hat. But I guess the nicest thing about it is it doesn't curl at all. I've never had it curl on anything. The only way it can curl, because it's a long stitch, is if you do an edge that's too tight. And then you create a tension problem. So make sure that if you decide not to do my edge, that you pick an edge that is nice and long. And when you do my edge, make sure you do it very, very loose. You want it to be just as loose as the rest of the scarf. Okay. And so you're just watching me now do what I showed you before. And I'm going to come back and do the two. And um, I'm going to decide if I need any more rows. But as soon as I've decided I have an, the right length, all we're going to do is do two rows of owl eye. The same thing we did when we started this. So go ahead. Make it as long as you want it. And then do your two rows of owl eye. And then we will do the final attachment. So I'll see you in a little bit. Okay, I'm just getting ready to do my owl eye rows. So I'm just going to finish off here. I'm just finishing the row. And then I'm going to finish the row the way that we're doing it when we do the rosebud stitch. Now when we do owl eye, we don't need to do the edge the same way. We're just going to do regular owl eye. Just like that. Okay. And so you're just going to do two rows of the owl eye. And then we're going to cast off and attach. Now there's two ways we can attach it. You can bind right off. And I'll have that bind off that I normally use that matches the cast on on my channel linked. But I'm just going to attach it right on the loom. That's where the Mobi will keep the Mobius fold, so it's never going to be visible. And it will attach it nice and evenly. going to owl eye back and I'm going to do it nice and fast so we get there and by now you should know how to do owl eye. Very easy stitch and it's the the basis of rosebud. Okay. So then we're back here. So all we do now is turn the loom like this and you're going to take your piece and you see I have it mine is fairly long here because once you attach it you can see it gets a lot shorter. You want to make sure you have a long enough one to drape but we're all different sizes and you can do it different widths and you can have it quite drapey so it hangs down quite low or have it closer to your neck however you'd like it. But we just lay it down. Huh. It won't be as awkward for you I'm sure as it is for me. And then you're just going to put one twist and it doesn't matter which way you go. You're just going to turn it around to the back. And then you're going to attach it 
on the loops. You're going to pick all the cast on loops and put them on. So you're going to look for the one at the side here and put it on one after the other. And if you get to the end and you don't have enough loops, <laughs> the other thing you can do if you have trouble with loops, and I'll show that to you. I'll just put you on pause for a second. Okay, I have these stitch markers and um, you can use them like if you had a black thread and you were having trouble seeing where that your cast on loops are and what you're looking for is the two loops. So see two loops. And so you want to make sure you get all those two loop pairs. And this is the first one right here. So you could just put a stitch marker in there and pin it and that'll hold them if you have trouble seeing when you're close to the loom. So that's a way you can do it. And because this is so awkward for me and it's so hard for me to see this far away to do this, <laughs> I'm going to put you on pause and I'm going to attach these all and then we'll meet up. Okay, so I've got mine all on. And uh, you might have to do it more than once. It's easy to miss a loop or use a loop that isn't exactly the side because sometimes the side is down a little bit this way. If you have trouble attaching on the loom, this can always be attached off the loom pretty easy. Okay, so you just find your working yarn now. Make sure everything's tight. And then all we're going to do is lift the bottom loop over the top two loops that we have here. Like that. Just knit it off. So I'll find the bottom loop, put it over the top loops. And then the two are attached together and we just have to bind it off. Now you can do a stretchy bind off and that will be linked to my channel. I'm going to do a, ba a very loose basic bind off. But if you have trouble doing a very loose basic bind off, you're going to want to do a stretchy. Okay. Now I'm going to get close in case you want to see how I do this really loose. So I'm just going to um, I guess just wrap this way when you start the first one and knit this over. Okay, there we go. And I'm going to do another little e-wrap on it. That nice and loose. See how I've, I've got a, a bit of a, a bit of a space here like that and knit it off. So each one I'm making into a fairly big loop. Okay. And then I'm putting that loop over this one and I'm just going to knit this one over and I'm going to hold the loop so it stays the, the size I want it. And then I'm going to come and do a really loose U-wrap and knit it off and then pull this and keep it loose so you can see what I'm doing. It's very loose. I'm looking at it as I go and I make sure it looks nice and loose like it did when we bound it on cast on. Okay, put it on here and then I'm going to hold this because it's going to be tighter and I'm just going to knit it over and I'm going to do another e-wrap nice and loose like that. There's a nice little loop there. I'm doing it really loose and take it over and now you can take a look at it. Make sure your stitches are nice and loose because if they're not you're going to want to adjust it. You're never going to see it, but you don't want this to be too tight where you have the Mobius. You want it to be nice and loose. Okay, so I'm keeping it really loose here. 
and you're going to knit it over and you're going to have to want to pull this so it can't tighten up from when you take this over and do a u-wrap and if you find that either of these are too tight to take over you could take them over one at a time so i'll show you that so you're holding this loop so it stays nice and loose and then you can take one of the loops over and then the other one over so you can do that if you find that it's too tight so i'm take, going over loose and i'm keeping a big loose loop this size to put on here and holding it so it stays loose and knitting that over another loose one and knitting it off and then i always take my time to check what i'm doing and make sure it's really loose so I could start loosening up if I'm too tight, but see this has lots of stretch and it's attached nicely, see? So that's all we want. Okay, so we're back here. <laughs> we take this loop off nice and loose, put it on here. I'm gonna hold it and knit this off. And do an E-wrap. We go nice and loose. Put it on, hold it. So that's all there is to it, keeping it nice and loose. But by all means, if you find that you have trouble doing a loose basic bind off, I have the super stretchy, extra stretchy bind off on my channel, and it is nice and stretchy. And you can use that and I'll have it linked. But for something like this, I just think the basic is better, which is why I use it. But um, it, you don't have to at all. There we go. And then one more around it. And there we go. And then I'm just going to cut this. I grab my scissors and cut this and take this off and put this through it to secure it and then let it tie it into a knot. And there we go. We're attached. This is what it looks like where you've bound off. And see, I might have been really loose, but do you see how tight that is? And it has some stretch to it, and that's what we wanted. And then you're just going to weave in your ends after. But here's your Mobius cowl. And so you just want the Mobius to come down where this is. Huh, now I lost it. <laughs> should be able to see it because I got my strings here. Yeah, there it is. See, it, it blends in pretty good. <laughs> I couldn't even find it. It blends in really good with the stitch. But there's your cowl. And you just put it on. And uh, you have this nice Mobius part to it. <laughs> I got it all twisted around here. <laughs> there it is. There's the Mobius twist when you're wearing it. And you see both of the patterns this way. So here's the one owl eye pattern. Hard to do this in the camera, that's for sure. Okay, you see the one pattern and you see the other pattern. And they're very, very similar. And it makes a beautiful Mobius cowl. So I'd like to try it on for you. Um, but <laughs> too hard to do. So I'm just going to try to put it the way it would wear. You'd be having this behind you and you'd have this nice little fold like this in the front and it'd be draping. Okay, it'd be draping on you very beautifully. I'll try to set it up good with the picture with my mannequin so you can see what it looks like, but it will look really, really gorgeous on. Okay, so I hope you enjoyed the video. And until next time, bye.